Praxis'ten herkese merhabalar. Bugün bizim takım olarak çok sevdiğimiz bir oyuna e, röportaj yapmaya geldik. Albion Online neden bu oyunu çok seviyoruz? Çünkü hepimiz yıllardır altımı online oynadık. Ve şimdi karşımızda gerçekten bu eski gelinliğe sürdüren çok iyi bir oyun var. Bir, biz bu oyunun gelişmesini istiyoruz. Yanında oyunun Creative Director'ı yani e, yaratıcı yönetmeni diyeyim. E, Jörg Friedrich var. Şimdi kendisinden güzel bir sohbet yapacağız. Lütfen bize kalın. Uh, hello Jörg. Uh, thank you very much for accepting this interview with me first of all. Uh, Thanks for coming. You won't believe that but as a team we all have the founders back. <gülüyor> yes. <gülüyor> That's good to hear. That's good to hear. <gülüyor> we like the game. Uh, we have been playing it since the first open beta that you had shared with the uh, gamers and with us. Yeah. Now, uh, how did you come up with this idea? Because you know everybody is doing the same type of stuff since EverQuest. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> That is exactly how we came up with the idea. Mm. So basically, um, the founders of um, of Sandbox, uh, roughly around four years ago, uh, mm. were a little bit unpleased with how MMOs uh, mm. looked back then. It was uh -huh. like uh, back then it was a very small team, it was four people. Um, now, uh, and now we are 40. Uh, okay. <laughs> But back then it was four people that actually said, "We want to try something else. We want to actually do a do a game that." is a modern game mm -hmm. um, in terms of accessibility uh -huh. but also still has the values and the dedication that the old MMOs have. So basically a hardcore MMO and a sandbox mm -hmm. MMO where I'm not getting uh, my hand holding all the time and the game doesn't tell me what to do mm -hmm. but I actually can dive into another world and I can actually become my own, fill out my own role and I can, the main interaction is with other players not with the system. Mm -hmm. But you know, uh, You said it's a hardcore game. Isn't it a risk for you? Um, How did you arrange to, you know, make it for the casual gamers to play it as well? Well, the the, the goal that we they're following the design principle is that we want to have it accessible. So at the beginning, right, the the barrier is very low. So you, mm -hmm. the, it's an isometric perspective game. Yes. Uh, you control it with the mouse. It your character does what you expect, right? You um, you control it with the mouse. Marks forward. You put, click on the tree. You start chopping the tree. Yeah. You click on an enemy. You start uh, chopping the enemy. Chopping the enemy, <laughs> exactly. So this is this. Everybody knows that, right? Mm -hmm. So this is not hard. Um, so we wanted to make this entry barrier really, really low mm. to actually uh, cater to people, but rather uh, lead them carefully um, towards the more complex systems. Mm. So and also this is also true when it comes to PvP, right? Yeah. So the this is why the world is divided into different zones. So when mm -hmm. you enter the game. First, you are in the royal area of the game, which is, means the king, the king's law is still in place uh -huh. um, in the Albion's world. Um, so you cannot just attack everyone. So at uh -huh. the beginning, um, players can take uh, uh, can go out and they can actually learn how the world works and um, not getting attacked all the time. But eventually, if you want to grow further in the game, you're going to go to the more dangerous areas, and these areas are basically free for all. Mm -hmm. Right? If you travel all the way up to the north to the outlands this is where the huge guilds are and yes. this is where the big combats are and there's no no laws in place so everybody can kill everybody yes yes <laughs> and lose all the loot and lose all the loot indeed so what do you think about it i mean is it a good thing for a play because as you know the games became so easy to play so hard to lose yes is it something that might uh, have a bad reaction from the players You have you uh, spend some time to gain those loot, and then you lose it just in a second. Yeah, um, I also, but I also think I like I, I know for myself as a player, right, that I miss, um, I often miss the challenge, and I miss the thrill, and I miss the risk, and I want to be um, because there's no, there's no there's nothing to lose, right? I can only move forward. I can only, I will always only progress. And what Albion gives me back, even when I when I play it, and I run like. I do trading routes uh, mm. from the south to the north and um, mm. uh, through the black zones, and I get killed a lot mm. and I lose all my stuff. Uh, yes. So this is this is the risk I take. And dude, I had moments where I said like, "Oh, screw this! This is horrible! I <laughs> not continue playing." But at the same time, I I picked that risk. I knew what was coming. I got uh -huh. warned in the in the first place, and I also know what what reward is waiting for me if I man manage to get these super scarce resources yeah. they don't have in the outlands to that city. I have a profit of a thousand percent. This is awesome. Yes. So it's worth it. So even if I die five times out of ten, 
uh, it's still I still make a good profit and it's still it's still worth it. And I believe overall that players are actually missing the thrill of really um, of really having a real challenge and being really being really thrilled by a game and also have a little bit of fear, you know, a bit mm. of being a little bit scared that mm. actually uh, something you did there you might lose it. Mm -hmm. And um, as so far from what I can see, players really really like it. Yet. I agree with you. It can be very frustrating. So we have. Um, so this is why there are the different zones. So this is why yes. if you really, if you're really not into PvP whatsoever, um, you can stay in the green zone forever mm -hmm. in theory and mm -hmm. just do your PVE. Just to get the really high gear, you eventually need to trade with players that um, that mm -hmm. go into the PvP areas, and mm -hmm. that's fine because that's actually the kind of dynamic we are looking for. There's. Um, there's, you cannot get everything in the PvP areas, and you cannot get everything in the pure um, PvE areas. So people need to interact with each other, which is all Albion is about. It's about player uh -huh. interaction. Hmm. Exactly. Uh, and the other thing is, you can lose the, all the stuff you have, but also you can win exactly. the stuff exactly. as well. Exactly. If you're on the other side, uh, out on the other end of it, right? Um, I know I have a couple of, of, of friends who basically they love to be bandits and they love uh -huh. to be in the woods and they love to attack poor traders like me and gank them and then uh -huh. steal all their stuff in their horse mm -hmm. <laughs> and send them back naked. And that's also a thrill. And I mean, something that is new because we, where, we, where we felt um, in the last beta we had a little bit of, uh, of an issue there is that um, that there are players that like small-scale PvP. There are players that actually mm. like the thrill of yes. that they potentially get yes. attacked, but um, but they don't like to be overwhelmed all the time. And exactly. um, and this is why we actually created the Outlands, which is this huge area where the big guilds can be and where the territories are, mm -hmm. because these guilds they they want to play like this. They like being with 50, 100 people going uh, roaming over the maps and actually killing each other in big hordes. Mm -hmm. um, but on the Royal Islands, we have the Red Zones, where you also have full loot PvP, but there is a reputation system in place. And that means if you, uh, a little bit like back then at Ultima, if you overdo it and you kill players all the time, you will be outlawed yes. and you cannot enter the Royal Cities yes. anymore. Yes. And um, this doesn't stop PvP from happening, there is still PvP, but it, it makes people think a little bit before they attack everybody. Mm -hmm. And it also keeps away these huge troops um, that that otherwise would roam the areas, uh -huh. because they keep it busy among themselves uh -huh, uh -huh. and fight for it in the outlets. Okay, as far as I remember, uh, now we had guild islands. Yes. Uh, we have our own islands, yes. as far as I remember. Now, uh, Please correct me if I'm wrong. Also, guilds may have their own territories, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, and uh, what can we gain when we have a territory in Albion? Well, territories are basically um, also just your own um, own grounds. You can actually do similar things than you can do on your um, on your guild islands. You can have uh, crafting areas. You can actually uh, farm there and and harvest. Can we build um, our own castle there? Not yet. Uh -huh. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's, these kind of things are something you can build your guild guild hall, which actually uh, looks pretty pretty nice, especially on the higher tiers. You manage to get there. Um, but right now, it's very similar to a guild island. Yet there's a huge difference because you because we want to reward that you have a much higher risk, right? And, and you can lose this territory um, at any time if yes. another guild uh, snaps it away. So, um, actually, everything you harvest there, everything you craft there, you get a big bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, you get a huge bonus for the guild. So it's the most efficient way for a guild is to have a territory and to use all that stuff there, even though they have the risk of it being taken away. And I think this is just like from small scale PvP, uh, me against another player, and I can lose everything. It's to the big scale where a guild can lose everything as well, but exactly. also has a high risk and a high reward. Now, as far as I know. Uh, you have a player-driven economy yes. in the game. Uh, don't you think this is a risk also? You know, the gamers may manipulate yeah. uh, the economy. Uh, what do you think about it? How are you going to planning? Uh, how are you planning to balance this? Uh, well, it's just a lot of balancing work. Um, I think so far we, we have been. I mean, we have now we have a lot of experience, right? This is now the 
uh, the fourth test that we run, the fourth long test, I think hmm. Alpha 1, Alpha 2, Beta... I beta had been two, at the last something, two. Yeah. Um, so we actually have a lot of experience now in uh, what can happen and what uh, what does happen. Hmm. Um, but it is it is a lot of work and, and there's, a, there's a lot to look after. I mean, one of the ways where, where we can actually very easily balance is basically the respawning of the resources, right? We have exactly. we have entire control over that. We of can course. basically say how often does it respawn, how how, uh, how fast does it get charged. Um, the market we don't want to control or um, or really influence the market because if people are good enough and understand the markets well enough to manipulate it, mm. I think that's fair game. That is, uh, in a way, that is economy PvP, right? Yes. If I if I go into a market and I figure, hmm, there's only three, I have this big stuff stack of say leather, uh -huh. and um, and there's someone is selling it cheaper than I would like it to sell, but it's, it doesn't have that much, so I buy it. Yes. And I'm then I'm the cheapest on the market, and uh -huh. people will buy my leather, uh -huh. and that is cool. I As they do it in all MMORPGs. Yes, exactly. I think that's that's a that's a nice nice way of playing the game, mm. and it's a very important way of playing the game. So, as you know, the problem is the money sellers. They yes. spam a lot in the game, yes. and uh, they sell uh, the stuff in the uh, game for real money. Yeah. So, are you okay with those, or are you no, going to stop them? Ob obviously not. Okay. Um, but I don't know if you have played the current beta, but they're basically gone. Um, hmm. I, I mean, from time to time you see one or two, but it's basically it's, it's far from um, far from the problems we had uh, beginning of last beta. Uh, where they're really spamming everything, and um, interesting enough, uh, we do not have the usual uh, the usual gold sellers that mm. you see in other MMOs, where actually people are really like uh, working for go for gold and then doing that. And I believe that this is because people can the players trade gold with each other anyway, mm. right? So basically, mm. the the uh, the best way for you to get to gold uh, if you don't want to spend money is just um, is just play the game mm. and then trade. Uh, trade in-game silver with other players, which mm -hmm. you can do. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the, the gold stock market for it. But then we, of course, took a lot of security measurements as well, uh, because like uh, in the last, the, the problem with these sellers were not so much that they were crafting for gold; they were actually stealing it. Um, they were actually hacking, um, oh, were they? hacking, oh. hacking, uh, hacking people and stealing it. Mm. And um, and this has been solved by mainly by the activation. You now need to have a, a two-step activation yes. to get into the game, mm. and that uh, worked wonders actually. Mm. Okay, so is there something else that you would like to add? Well, one thing is uh, final beta is running right now. It just uh -huh. started, so it's really good to st you can still get in and win the race. Um, it started first of August, and we are. Going to, we want to release the game later, uh, later this year. Of course, the the this final beta was a huge step, and a lot of things have changed and added for, uh, added to the game. Yeah, I know. But for we have example, you can easily level up right now. Yeah, and the, yeah, we have the learning points now, um, which is good for people that have family, yes. <laughs> like you or me. And um, you also, we also have new biomes now, right? There are different biomes, and the resources are distributed in different biomes. We actually have mountains now, and mm. cities in the mountains have more ore and rock than cities in the in the forests, and so on. So this has changed. The world has become uh, more than twice as big. Mm -hmm. It's really huge now. It's more than 300 square kilometers big. And mm. um, yeah, all these things we need to test, right? This is why Great. we do why we do the beta, and we wanna wanna uh, have this test run for at least another say two months mm -hmm. and then um, then we want to launch the game. Uh, the last question. Sure. How are you going to proceed from now on? Okay, uh, we have the game, we have all the balances. Uh, now, after we started, yes. we have the founder's packs and other packs. Yeah. What are we going to spend money on? <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing is, one thing is um, what we expect we expect people that really want to play the game to have premium steps, which is basically our model of a soft subscription. Yes. So if you would buy a premium status, or buy, uh, which just makes that crafting and, and leveling and everything goes a little bit faster. Um, if, if a little would, bit faster, it's still a great, good advantage. Yeah, yeah, it's a good advantage. Uh, I agree. But it's also we, we expect people that really want to dedicatedly play the game to actually have the status. Mm -hmm. So. Um, they can buy that. They can buy that by real money. That's 
roughly translates to $12 uh -huh. uh, per month. But uh, you can also, you can also, since you can trade silver versus gold and the other way around, you can also just play the game mm -hmm. and then uh, buy it from buy it from there, buy it with in-game money. Uh, okay. So both is, both is, uh, both is possible. I think that's a, that's a good system. Yeah, I think so too. I think it's a really fair system a for, fair for, for, both, right for both sides. Yes, I believe um, because like we don't really, I mean. We're happy if people want to spend a lot of money in the game, but there's really, um, there's really right now there's not really a motivation to do that, and you, it will not really, you will not really get a big advantage by I don't know if you want to spend 300 euros in gold, yet what do you want to do with it, right? Of um, so yeah. so basically you still need to learn the game, and you still need to get the gear, and you still need to get good at it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's pretty fair. Um, we have a, we have lots of plans. We have a full full backlog uh, with stuff that we want to add to the game um, after after launch. Even um, just to say a couple of things. There's actually uh, one of our PVE faction that um, that we want to uh, build up much much more than it is built out right now. Mm. Um, that's all I want to say. Okay. Um, there's there's uh, lots of ideas that uh, sometimes come from the community. There's stuff like idle features, there's things like fishing that is uh, that is mm -hmm. brought up regularly. Mm -hmm. And all these things fill our backlog and we, we regularly sit down and prioritize to see what can we make it into the game. Um, but I can already tell you that these are things that will be added uh, post-launch. Because the first and foremost goal for us is bringing the game now uh, to a state that is complete enough and balanced enough that we can say now sail ship. Uh -huh. um, with the server's never gonna stop, we will never see a wipe again. Um, this is this is the game that you're gonna play for the next five years or ten. <laughs> okay. The only thing that I ask from you is please do not ruin the lore, because you have a very very, very nice lore right now. Yes. Uh, you know that's how it happens in MMORPGs. They add Norsemen, they add Chinese, they add uh, Arabs, they add. Pandas, yes, whatever, and they they ruin the lore. So yeah. please do not ruin this beautiful lore. No, no lore. we are very, very, very dedicated to our lore. We, uh, we all love it, um, and I think it's very strong. And it's also, I think it's so strong because it's so pure. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, the, the world of Albion has become bigger now. You find now areas that weren't there before, like the desert, for example, uh -huh, which, is, uh, uh -huh. which is very new. But we feel this adds contrast. But you will not get uh, pink, uh, pink pandas there. Um, that, is, that is just not Albion, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Albion ile ilgili yaptığımız röportaj burada bitiyor ama sakın aklınızdan şu geçmesin. Yani bundan sonrasında e, ne olacak ne biçeceğine dair biz her zaman kendine kontakta olacağız. O yüzden lütfen sorularınız olsa bize iletmekte çekinmeyin. Şimdi röportajımız burada bitiyor. Sonraki videolarımızda görüşmek üzere. Hoşçakalın. Uh, thank you very much uh, thank you for so sharing much. your time with us. Thank you so much for coming. See you next Gamescom. Yes. Thank you. Thanks.